This is the iFootage Anglerfish SL160DN. This is actually iFootage's first entry into the lighting section of photography and video equipment. And spoiler alert, this is an absolutely fantastic light. And so I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the specs list of this brand new light from iFootage. And then I'm gonna get into what I noticed after using this light for the past few weeks. Some of the things I like about this light, as well as of course the things I noticed that I don't like about this light. But one last thing before I get started, iFootage did send me this light at no cost to me in order to make a review of on my channel. However, no money changed hands and they did not tell me to say anything about this light. Every single thing that I say in this video is 100% my opinion. However, I wanna be transparent with you. And now that that's out of the way, let's get right into the iFootage 60DN. So as you can see, this is a really small chip on board light from iFootage with a mini Bowens mount. However, you can get a regular size Bowens mount attachment to turn this into essentially a standard Bowens mount video or photo light. Now this particular light, the 60DN, is a daylight balance, which is 5600 Kelvin, 70 watt light. So with its 70 watts of output, it can output 1220 lux at max brightness, which is very competitive in this sort of range of lights. So like I said, this is a daylight balanced light at 5600 kelvins with a plus or minus 200 kelvin tolerance. This light of course has a standard DC input and it comes with a power brick with really long cables, um, a really nice quality power brick that I'll get into actually a little bit later in this video. However, something that this light has that I haven't seen in any other lights um, in this category is actually a USB-C 100 watt power delivery input. So this light has a USB-C input, which is crazy. You do need a 100 watt power delivery power source for this, so it's not a standard like phone charger. However, it's still crazy that you can use a power delivery USB-C bank and you know attach it wherever you need to and use that to power this light rather than the standard DC 15 to 20 volt input. So this light also can use iFootage's brand new app to control the light through Bluetooth and control things like the brightness and the different effects that are built into this light. And speaking of effects, there are eight customizable effects built into this light. Now standard lights of course have effects like this. Um, pretty much any other light in this price point and category are gonna have built in effects. However, this one you can actually customize the frequency of them, which is something that I've really missed on a lot of lights I've used. So for example, if you set this to like a lightning effect or a broken light effect where it kind of flashes the light, usually you can't change you know, how fast the flashes happen or anything like that. However, with this light, you actually can, which is a very nice feature to have built into this light. And this light is of course very small. You can see it compared to my hand here. It fits right in my hand and it weighs just under 1.7 pounds. And the build quality in general is very good. This is almost completely made out of metal and the build quality just in general, I'd expect this to hold up very well for a long time of use. So now let's get into some of the pros and cons I've noticed after using this light for a couple of weeks. So one nice little feature I noticed about this light is you can actually click in on the brightness knob on this light. And essentially if you click it in, it'll cycle between zero, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% brightness. And it's just a fast way if you don't wanna rotate and you try to get those exact points, it'll just go to exactly 20, 40, 60, you know, all the way up to 100% and 20% increments just by clicking in on that knob. Not a huge groundbreaking feature, just something really nice that they added into this. Also, I already mentioned this, but the build quality of this light is amazing. And if you know iFootage's track record with build quality, pretty much everything I've used from them has been fantastic quality. They really go above and beyond in terms of build quality with their products. And this is no exception. The build quality is fantastic on this light. And now here's the big feature of this light that really separates them from other lights in this category. iFootage actually fine tuned this light and essentially made it have less blue light and more of a natural spectrum versus other LED lights. I'm not gonna go insanely deep into this, but they essentially tuned this light to look a lot more natural and a lot more equal to sunlight versus other lights in this category. And I tested this side by side with my Nanlite Forza 60, which is a very high quality, very well-known brand of lights. And I was really surprised at how noticeable the difference was between these two lights. The Nanlite on skin tones looks a lot more yellow and does not look as natural as the iFootage light. They've clearly put a lot of effort into making this light look super natural and have very very high quality looking color to it and that alone i think is the main selling point a lot of this light is essentially equivalent to competitors that are in this size and price range like the nanlite forza 60. it's an almost identical light honestly the build quality the size the weight everything about it is super comparable to similar lights in this category so the color quality is really that defining feature that pushes this light above and beyond other lights in this category. 
However, there are a few cons that I noticed that you should definitely keep in mind before purchasing this light. So let's just get into those right now. All right, con number one, this might sound kind of picky. However, I just wanna bring it up just so you're aware of it, um, just so you know, because it is something that I noticed about this light. So I'm gonna grab this power adapter right here. This is the power brick for the light. Really nice and small, like I said, it's really high quality. The cables feel really high quality and really tough and well built. However, you see the strap right here. So this is a very, very nice thing to have um, on any light being able to hang up this power brick. If your light's high enough to where this can't reach while the brick's sitting on the ground, having this little strap here is super nice to have. And I definitely want it on all of my lights. It's just one of those little things that's super nice to have. So this light does have that. However, it's actually attached to the cord on this rather than the brick itself, you know, like the plastic structural part of the brick. This is attached to the cord. I don't know if you can see that very easily. So essentially, when you dangle this from wherever you need to with this little strap, it's still tugging on the cord of this camera. And I can see this eventually if this gets tugged too hard, you know, or even just from years of it dangling from this, being held directly by the cable there, I can see this having issues with kind of pulling the cable out slowly over time or fraying the cable or something like that. I really don't understand why they didn't just attach this strap directly to the power brick because I can definitely see this being one of those little structural integrity points that could fail before anything else on this light. And so that's just something to bring up. I really don't know why they didn't just add the strap to the power brick itself where it'd be a lot better structurally. Um, but that's the first little gripe of this light. It's not a deal breaker by any means. It's just something I wanted to bring up because I personally noticed that right away. One more thing, this actually could be a pro and a con. So this is 100% dependent on you. However, every time you plug the light in, so let's say you're done shooting for the day, you turn the light off, you unplug it, pack it away. Next time you get the light out, put it back in the stand, as soon as you plug it into wall power, it'll power the light on. So it doesn't matter if you press the power button on or off or if you unplug it when it's off, anything like that. No matter what, if you unplug it, plug it right back in, it'll automatically power the light back on, which personally I find kind of annoying. You know, if I'm like working on rigging it and I plug it in, it's right in my face and it just all of a sudden powers on, you know, full brightness. I personally don't like that and it's kind of been annoying when I've been moving this light around. Um, that I have to, every single time I plug it back in, I have to worry about it turning on and then, you know, hold the power button down to turn it back off and then continue what I'm doing. However, I could see this being a good thing for a lot of people. Like if you have it rigged up super high up in the air and you pretty much unplug it and plug it back in, you know, from down below to turn it on and off, it's very nice that you can just plug it in. It'll automatically turn on. You don't have to like go all the way up there to try to power it back on. So fully dependent on your use case, for me, I found this really annoying and I wish there was like a setting in the menu to change that or something. Um, it's just something kind of annoying that I've noticed while using this. And the last thing I noticed in terms of the cons of this light, the fan on this light is fairly quiet. It's definitely quieter than my Nanlite Forza 60. However, I don't know if this is my unit specifically, but the fan has this kind of high pitched noise that I personally find more annoying and more distracting than a standard louder, but more, you know, lower pitched fan sound. Again, I really don't know how to explain it. That's just something I noticed. It's a more annoying fan sound, even though it is quieter than the Nanolite Forza 60. But in this like 60 to 70 watt category of lights, this is an absolutely fantastic light with amazing color quality. And I would definitely, definitely recommend it if this is the category of light you're looking into. But that wraps this video up. If you want to check this light out, I'll link it down in the description below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next